In this video, we talk about Hawk. Hawk is a urban app. With Hawk, you can explore a real shrubbery and something that I'm claiming as the perfect browser tool. <laughs> it is a beautifully unified concept that will be relevant for a very long time. So we go over that and we go over the ingenious that pieced it together. And yeah, thank you to everybody who's given to Fund that's been quite successful. And also thank you to the makers of Fund, Takwex Syndicate. They have been excellent working with me in all the different ways that I've brutally crashed their application. <laughs> so thank you. These videos are only because of the, the bestest of people giving to Fund. We are on our way. We kind of like blew past October, which is fine. I have it in review. Talkwex is looking over it. And by the time you get this video, I'm expecting that November should be launched. If you want to encourage me in making the second video for November, that would be amazing. After November, I have this last milestone. I, I didn't totally understand what I was doing whenever I first set this up. Once November clears, extra will be open. I think it's important to leave yourself open for the generosity of of, of other people. Just let people be angel investors. So I set it up to 800, but there's actually no limit. Uh, the final milestone, people can give as much as they want. Fund does not limit the last milestone. So when that's open, see what you can do. Half of that amount will go to give directly. The higher the number that is, the more I give to give directly. So that's a nice win-win. I certainly love give directly. November should be open if you want to help. The basic idea for these episodes was to say $20 an episode per person. I was going to make two videos a month, $20 each. The idea is I set it for 400 because I was like, maybe there's 10 people, you know, <laughs> maybe there's 10 people that would like to give me 40 bucks to make two videos in a month. Once that's done, I'll have to reevaluate making videos and how I would set up a fund to make that happen. I give half to give directly because I love give directly. They're the company that hands money, no strings attached to the poorest people in the world, just so they can solve their money problems. We actually got a little update, which I thought was fun. Like the $213 that we gave in May was delivered oh, to Rwanda. Oh, nice. Was transferred to 262 families. They talk about some of the people, their homes, read the stories. It's just good, just good, good stuff. I love it, love to see it. That's good directly, it's happening, it's real. Uh, I'm not pulling anybody's legs. And Takwex would shut me down if I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Enjoy the video. I don't really like that I'm going to be looking up like this the whole time, but, you know, here we are. Verb, if you mess this up, so hear me. John? All right. Good morning. <laughs> this is Ferb. He also has a brother who's being crazy. They have these bells. I'm going to just take them off because I could already tell they're going to be too much. Uh, welcome to this brisk Wednesday morning. It is bright, but it has a nice little, just tiniest little chill when you're outside. This might be a rowdy one. Hey! Because <laughs> we've got, we've got the kittens, the new kittens. Our Nova went missing right at the end of August, September, October, November. So, yeah, approaching on three months of that, we're kind of, um... Settling into that idea, uh, yeah, anyways. But though with the rowdiness, we have this water pick to keep them away from all this equipment because they know no bounds. Their curiosity and playfulness. I'm gonna go take off Phineas's necklace. Their names are Phineas and Ferb. Hold on. Kittens! Thumbnail! <laughs> Phineas and Ferb. You guys don't know how to look at a camera? You need treats or something. All right, see if I can tell them apart later. <laughs> So gosh darn the same. Well, I have a new setup here, which means I gotta wear glasses. And today I'm gonna uh, sport an Urban hat. Big thanks to FinMap for uh, sending that to me a while back. Today, I wanna explain an Urban app that's out there called Hawk. And Hawk is interesting because it is in the shrubbery family and might just be the perfect browser tool. That's what I mean by HTML inside of HTML inside of HTML. Hawk is made by Migrev Dulceg. Uh, Migrev Dulceg has given us many awesome things. This is Hawk. So yeah, thank you, Migrev Dulceg. Let's see what else we got here. He's made some great hits like the RSS feeds, the feeds aggregator, IS, uh, which is a baby hawk, which is a text editor. 
and Hawk, which he's calling a Manx machine, which is great because that's kind of what I want to talk about. Migrev was a part of the team that was building on top of shrubbery, like the neo urbit shrubbery stuff. He took the concept of shrubs, the concept of shrubbery, made this beautifully browser native app on urbit that uses the shrubbery concept to make something that I think is the absolute most realized browser tool, which is like really grand to say. I had some videos where I talked about shrubbery. I talked about the benefits of it. The short of it is combining the fundamental part of your computer, the folders and the files, and taking the idea of an app. If you could combine those things together and you just go boom, every single file is a folder and an app. And everything that the app remembers just gets placed inside the files of its children underneath it. That becomes shrubbery. Whenever you do that, the like notion of an app kind of melts away. It just becomes the function of how your files communicate with each other. That's shrubbery. And it's something that's been being worked on and workshopped and was dreamed up and it was becoming more and more real in the urbit or the Martian context. Migrev was able to make the connection between another larger concept and shrubbery to make a user space app that lets you do that with what's basically HTML documents. Let me quickly open up Hawk and we will see how Hawk is utilizing the shrubbery concept. Here we're just greeted with a root file. You can make this file anything that you'd like or you can create all kinds of files. So this is kind of like your files and folders system. This is a tree for your file system. In Urbit, you're dealing with a bunch of trees. And so in this way, you're actually getting to create files inside of files, and that makes your trees. Here, I have this like front file. This is being generated by code created by Migrev here. Just right here in the browser, you make the code, easy to edit, easy to change, easy to see it rendered and make sense. Boom, that's your file. That's what lives here. And because a file is the same as a folder, you can put all kinds of things in there. So I've got some hello from Mars file, hello, hello from Mars, halo. There's your tree. Yeah, so the metaphor is like the Hawk app is flying over these trees and it can see down and up the trees. You've got your file and your other files and there's more files and shrubs. You're flying above the trees and you're looking down. And that's what, that's what these are. These are the different kind of trees you might have. And every one of these is a file. And what's amazing is the files are all the exact same thing. What that thing is, so every single one of these files is code that you write up. This is Hoon language. But yeah, you have the code, it runs, and it will spit out everything that that code generates. So in this case, the intention of the code was to create an SVG here and create a bunch of rectangles and get them spinning in an animation. So we have the SVG created and inside of that is a rectangle, another rectangle, and it's spinning with an animation, another rectangle, another rectangle. And that is what generates all these different things. So. Every one of these things is this. We can simplify this. This would work just as well like this. The header, remove all that other stuff, boom. So this thing, but this, H1, hello. That, that thing, that is a Manx. We've seen Manx before in other videos, but it is worth saying that Manx is equivalent to HTML or more completely, it's equivalent to the generic case of HTML, which is XML. HTML is, this, is the way that your browser works. It's the way that it thinks. It's the way that it creates elements on the page. It's not going to go away. The browser lives and breathes HTML. <laughs> that is the concept that the browser gets. Like It is nothing but that. That is the world of the browser. So to recap, we have a, a shrubbery-based app on Urbit where you can arbitrarily create any file. That file is a Manx and 
inside that Manx, you can put any number of other Manx files, any other number of HTML-like things that can create whatever you want. He has these examples, like a checklist. Typically, if you wanted the functionality of a HTML page to have the functionality of coding and manipulating things, you'd have to do all this in JavaScript. But in this case, you can write up as much Hoon as you want, as long as it spits out things like this, this renderer, this brings us back into Manx world. When you put out the Manx, you're putting out HTML. That is one of these valid Hawk files. The Hawk doesn't have any other kind of thing that it has. What Hawk is doing is marrying shrubbery and HTML, like AKA the browser. So every file and then everything inside of it, this is now equal to an app. Like the, the file system is equal to an app. And every file is a souped up HTML document. Every file is Manx. Um, so to me, this is just an open sandbox. This is the browser's shrubbery. That's kind of like just like an open like, here's a Minecraft world. See what you can build with these things. Every file is a mix. Goo. Okay, so let me take a moment for a second. Whenever I decide to make a video or talk about Urbit, I try to stay as close to the Urbit core, like the Urbit computer, you know? I mean, all oh, these are really great. Like, when it, when it comes to all the different apps, there's a bunch of different things that you could build a world in or like keep stuff in. But I personally like to keep it as close to the ground level of Urbit, like 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 this terminal level, messing with the lowest level of Urbit as possible. Like because um, I guess because of third party risks, <laughs> like we've watched user apps come We've watched them go. We've watched connections with one app to another come and go. Given that kind of volatility, personally, I don't want to dive too deep and put too much precious stuff on something or become so well inversed in somebody who built something on top of Urbit and like the way that they think. So I'm, I'm hesitant to be like, this app, this Urbit app, put everything inside of it because I would rather understand the lower Urbit levels and build on that. I think that stuff is reliable. The lower part of Urbit, the kernel space, the core, that stuff is meant to get to a point where when you build something that works on top of that, it works. And so that is worth some time to understand. This is like building the 500 year computer. I'm gonna have to say though, Hawk is an exception. Migrev Dolseg has been outstanding and he has been very clear and focused. This is something he's worked on for a long time. He's really thought about it. If you're going to make a, a front end that interacts with your application be the browser, Migrev just made the browser tool, capital T, the browser tool. It's like I am in the browser. I'm creating a file system in the browser. All those files are also an application. And so like any kind of thing that I can see or enjoy or consume in the browser, I can just generate. You got your texts and your SVG, you got your images, you got your GIFs. This can be anything that the internet has ever shown you, anything that a browser has ever showed you, you can do this right here. And it's it's all right here, every single thing about it. I can, with confidence, or maybe, maybe a small little bit of salt, that like, I can totally recommend Hawk. It's quite powerful. Every one of these things are like pokeable. Um, this is, you can send commands to that app to, to do things. I still don't totally understand it. I personally am looking forward to making things so that I can like, I can gain like a real, like hands-on contact understanding of shrubbery and, and not just an intellectual exercise, but like really get an intuition for it. I think Migrev has great taste. He's done a lot of great work, a great history of things. I think he's on the right track. As long as we have a front end browser, which I keep on like, I guess that's maybe that's the caveat. I personally would love terminal user interfaces to flourish on Urbit. But so far, what we have is the browser. This is the browser tool for creating the browser stuff in the browser and, and it is the app. It's the app in the file system. <laughs> Hawk is its own world and you can make it whatever you want to make it. Like I said, very kind of Minecraft-esque at this point. 
Um, it's really good. So a lot of this has already changed and I can tell you this will be even more powerful than what I'm showing because of the Urbit network on the back end. Being able to send things and gate things is actually really simple. Which Urbit computers can look at this file? Which Urbit computers can send commands to the application to alter it? This is a very simple thing because of the Urbit network, how these computers talk to each other through this. He, he already had that stuff all ready to go and he's pulled it back a little bit because it's like, <laughs> it's just a little bit too good. So, you know, ease into it, take your time. Migrev, he's one guy and he is making it. He has a real vision and a real purity to it. I trust him kind of implicitly on that. I guess to like put it out there, I've made this in a couple of different ways, but I created, created this. this? Um, I was messing with this in my, oh, oh, one thing about Hawk, there was one video that I did with an Urbit one pager. I, I think I had it going on Cliff, is that right? So on my moon, I'd created this one pager, which I guess is like sadly relevant because we got the new cats and oh, that makes me sad. You know, but dudes, yeah. So I made it the one pager here at havedishome.art slash Nova. It's, it's viewable. This, this is what we ended up doing to make the one pager. We had to, we had to create the file put it up to a URL, then we needed to make the one pager. This creates at least the top half of this page. I have my edit button and this is where all that stuff is. That was like the one pager and that was a bunch of different things that I had to go to. But like, let's take Hawk over here where it's like, well, here it is. Um, come over here and let's add to this. And there it is. <laughs> if you remember the process, back and forth, committing and saving and all that. As far as a, uh, an Urbit one pager goes, after I after I released that video, Migrev came up. And he's like, oh, I should have shown you Hawk beforehand. And this is by far more superior. This is a much better one pager. Every single one of these files can be one pagers. You just got to make them visible, make them available. I think that's a feature for later. I don't think this is clear web just yet. It totally is possible. I am considering this is a little a little guitar toy thing that I'm messing with. Uh, I'm trying to make a guitar course that people can see and this would be a possible, you know, like question. You could try to answer it with a little click. I can create this as a form and have each of these little clicks mean something and generate the responses. I don't 100% know how to make that work with all the information, but it's probably what I'll go with. I'll try to, I'll try to make this a little bit more real. I'm going to try to understand what it would mean to have kind of shrubbery children that understands the data and talks back to it. It's a, it's a nice little frontier and it's an amazing sandbox. Hawk displays a certain level of sanity and simplicity to the browser front end world. It marries it in a way that makes it just one solid thing. I think that that's beautiful and great. I do think shrubbery, in the structure of shrubbery and how that works. I'm pretty convinced that that is the future of Urbit. The future, like the horizon of when that catches up to this, that is much more unknown. But Hawk is here. It's not a replacement for shrubbery becoming a stronger integral part of Urbit. I think those things are separate. But by golly, is Hawk fully featured and just real ripe for greatness. Whenever you start with the simplest things, you're doing pretty good. I'm excited to mess around with shrubbery, get some hands-on understanding of it. So there's Hawk. You can mess around with that. It might be the perfect browser tool. I, don't, I, can't, I can't imagine it being any simpler. Like how, how in the world could you get, how in the world can you make the browser both a file system and the thing that you display and where you create it edit it it's just like poof poof man it's profound the hawk build the trees explore the trees have the trees talk to each other stamp of approval <laughs> i'm gonna mess with it really it really is something see you in the next video